right, so here is the episode breakdown. <clears throat> uh, episode one, I don't have a title for it. I don't know if it has a title. Uh, uh, but so. essentially, we, we start like with what you said. Where, what was it? Um, so he's on, a, he's on a planet. He's looking for his sister. And so he, it's in a seedy area of town. There's a lot of bars. There's a lot of brothels. <coughs> Uh, and he actually walk. He he stumble. He walks into a brothel. And he's actually looking for his sister. And so that's we find out pretty early on in the series that he's got someone that he's looking for. It's going to uh, potentially drive his character motivation. And then there's some shitheads at a bar that are doing you know normal shithead things. Hey, and, what are you looking at? Uh, and it's very believable. You know, it's just like these guys aren't cops, but they're security guards. And she's like, look, these guys aren't actually cops, but you know they just <laughs> they got guns, inflated egos, and all these things. And it, it just it sets up that world. Yeah, and it boils over. Uh, and uh, it's a well shot, acted, directed, and uh, we get a droid scene. So uh, this uh, droid we're introduced to in a very awesome way it's not overly funny it's not cutesy it's not childish but it's it's just fun it's b2 e m e m o i think b2 but they just call him b uh as a little little droid that drives around i'm like oh, you already got me i like him uh hounds run past him and he's getting all kind of scared and and then the hounds end up peeing on him and i just notice as they're setting up the cd brothel and he's searching and then the robot scene i wrote down really good music like and I love all the dirtiness of it and how it's very lived in, um, and also in this uh, the way they tell the story, they're doing flashbacks to his time as a child, um, and so we do see Andor as a kid. Uh, he seems to be a part of a little lower tech tribe uh, in, in the wilderness, and a ship is crash landing. So of course, all the kids, what the fuck is that? You know, and it, it crash lands, and they f they get like. Uh, you know, sort of a raiding party together to go check out what's going on mm -hmm. in that subplot. Uh, but back in this subplot, um, Andor ends up <clears throat> trying to walk away. These security guys are coming after him down the hallway, going to do a little shakedown, going to impound his car, make him pay fees. And Andor's like, fuck, I can't be caught where I'm at. So... They get into a scuffle, and he, like, knocks the dude out, I think with his elbow or something like that, um, and get into a fight, basically. Uh, they had him at gunpoint, too. So Andor knows how to defend himself. Unfortunately, as it happens sometimes, a random fucking punch or placement of something, you hit somebody wrong, they're fucking dead. out. And he's like, oh, get up, get up. And it turns out he's not even out. He's fucking dead. And so Andor has to deal with this, like, oh, shit, I just fucking killed somebody. He accidentally killed one guy. <laughs> and then and then that's just why it's <laughs> so well acted, because without saying it, without them spelling it out, you, the, the guy just starts to beg for his life. He's like, he realizes, and you can see it in his face, that it's like Andor has, has their gun now, and he killed somebody. I gotta tie up the loose ends, right? We'll go, I didn't we'll go think together. this guy was gonna do it. He <laughs> executes him in the first <laughs> ten minutes. Andor, Andor executes a guy. somebody, and I'm like, all right, I'm on board. Street like, justice. Now shit. we have to figure all this shit out. And then, you know, because we heard about this in in Rogue One, he's got a shitty past. He's done some things he's not proud of. He's killed people in the past, and we get to see that here, and it's done excellently. So he's on the run, basically. He uh, talks to B2 emo, EMO, B to lie. <laughs> Apparently, it takes a little more power for these older <laughs> models to lie. So he's like, I, I, I got to go to recharge, recharge at home. <laughs> <laughs> already love this robot. Um, and, and it's not like a fucking robot that's going to, it's not like, um, what's his robot? BB 8? No. Oh, no. Uh, fuck, I can't remember his robot. You know, the black security droid robot, K K2S, uh, something like that. Um, it's not like that where it, <laughs> this is a, 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 an odd couple. It's the robot of his sort of surrogate mother character. Um, anyways, he's asking the robot to cover for him because people are going to be asking about him. He asks, he asks his friend to lie for him. Um, and we get this great scene of these workers, uh, you know, just blue-collar workers, Working hard in the salvage yard, and uh, he's got a friend, and he's like, "All right, this this is where I was. <laughs> I wasn't over here, and you know, make up make up all this stuff, right?" And uh, they basically um, will um, 
Then we go to the security office, and you got this old man who, you know, is the officer, head se- of the sector, and you've got this young, up-and-coming officer that's like, we gotta, we gotta get these, get them, law and order and everything, and he's like, this is what happened, and it's like, look, here's what we're gonna do. This didn't happen. Or they died like heroic like deaths. Like they were in a shady brothel. They were doing this. They weren't supposed to. All these things. He's like, we're going to cover this up. And you can tell it's not sitting right with the, with the young officer. And he's like, and he's like, I don't have time for this. I got to report to the Empire. The, the less the Empire knows about us and has to worry about us, the more autonomy we have. And I'm not dealing with this. Unfortunately for that old man, uh, the motherfucker doesn't follow his advice. He immediately wants to uh, find people, like-minded people, to to help him in the search for this Andor criminal. Um, and then uh, what happens? Uh, oh, he asks Bix for help. <clears throat> so I'm fa- I'm curious how Bix is going to factor in, if she's going to factor in at all into the future. But she does have uh, an arc here in in these three episodes. Uh, basically, she's what. Um, She's a, a procurer of uh, or, and seller of parts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she see. basically knows uh, she has contacts, and he needs her contacts essentially to sell this extremely valuable and rare imperial part. That it's like, how the fuck did you get that? You know, kind of thing. So he can get his money, so he can go on the run. And this ties into the other subplot, which is that imperial ship crashing long ago on that planet. <coughs> uh, and so we get some of that tribe stuff uh, again. And I keep thinking to myself, it's just so weird to know his fate already. And does that take away anything from it for you guys? That you're like, well, he, he's going to die on... No, know, I mean, it's, it's not like fucking Obi-Wan, which I almost forgot existed. When we were shitting on, on Boba Fett, I forgot to shit on Obi-Wan because <laughs> fuck that series. <laughs> But I mean, like, there's times where you're, you know, you you know that like Leia's <laughs> gonna be fine, uh, and that fucking episode, Alex, with the fucking snow speeders and the and the the little what do you call it trench coat yeah. baby thing. I'm <laughs> like, th- that would never happen in Andor. No, no, it's just I and it's not. so I happy. No, 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 Joe. I hope not. I don't even think they're capable of thinking in that yeah, one dimension. It's just one big porta potty slurpee that everyone's just like <laughs> sucking down. And oh, it's just like, it's gross. fucking awful. And now we have some adults have entered the room. Yeah. And then, so it's like they're actually doing it. And so it's like, you know, that, you know, what ultimately what ends up happening to yeah. these characters. And so as long as they don't do. Hor- like dumb scenes where they're slowly lowering Andor into lava, and you're like, "Well, I know he lives because we've seen the movie." As long as they don't set it up that way, and the tension is on the people around him, yeah, which is the smart way. Which is what we said about Obi Wan. We said about other things too. It's like you it's can not so much about what well, is about it about him also. surviving, but like it, as long as we we care about the side characters mm-hmm. and whether or not they die and how it, then then it can be done well. Yeah, yeah, because I thought it was done well too. Because like Tim finally got his up and coming later on. There you go. So Tim is Tim. introduced <laughs> as a boyfriend for Bix. Bix. So it seems maybe Andor and Bix had a previous relationship or whatever. Because Bix is getting a little little jealous, jealous of this Andor always coming around. But he seems cool at first. He's like, oh, how can I help? You know, this. Uh, well, uh, you know, we'll find that out later. So anyway, we have. Um, just love the lo-fi sets. Like, everything is just perfectly, you know, done. And just really impressed with the set's design. So this officer is searching for him. Uh, and he is just pissed off with the complacency of pretty much almost everybody on his security firm. He's looking for, you know, allies. And he finds it in this one, fuck, I forget his name. It's like Sy- Silex or something. And I like this dude. It's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. You know, that we need to fucking, you know, it's like a lot of people around here, you know, aren't doing their job. And we need to use the, the corporate forces uh, to sharpen the knife of. The you only know, way to keep a knife just sharp just is to use it. And I was yeah, like, you don't know yeah, anything yeah. about knives. Yeah. That is not at all how, <laughs> how this works. What he is is him and most of the people in his group. Or I don't know if you've ever seen those, like, people that the security officers that wear. Their 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 suits are too small, and they run around and they rough up people like that's They what even they even make a joke about that. Like it's like the, the older man's like, "Did you mo- modify your suit? Yeah, y- yeah, f- f- here and here, and also had it tailored and, yeah. and fitted." 
<laughs> so yeah, they're a little pompous and a little, uh, you know. They uh, definitely nightstick people tactical. in the head for no reason because they no one loves them. Mm-hmm. And so then uh, we uh, uh, g- learn that uh, Bix has uh, a contact for him that will uh, purchase uh, this piece for him, and she's unsure if she can get him here in time because he's like, I, I gotta, I gotta go. I mean, I fucked up bad. I uh, killed somebody. <laughs> So, um, and so then we get like uh, a flashback of to the tribe again, and we see why is he searching for his sister? Well, at some point, uh, he is on the team of of little kids that basically uh, go out in a raiding part, not a raiding party, uh, just a exploratory party to see the crash. Party, so he so. separates from his sister, and she's back with like the women and the little kids. Ends up, as we learn in other episodes, never sees her again. So he needs, he wants, that's why he's like trying to look for his sister. So, um, and then that, it ends right there on that flashback where he's leaving his sister. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? You know, I was really into it. It just cuts off and it's like, well, can I give the, how do I rate this episode? Yes. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, I Just liked it very more. much, but there was not a whole lot there. You can tell that, well, you're just cutting a three hour movie into one hour. You don't really care about, you know, anything. So, but again, all those good things we talked about it, it's here. It's reminding me of Mandalorian in good ways, but, but completely different. Obviously, um, just atmosphere, mood, maturity, uh, believability, it's all working. So, uh, what would you rate this first episode? <coughs> first episode for me is going to be an eight. We get the introduction of uh, of Andor and just like everything that was going on, and it set the tone really. Yeah, set so the tone and the quality. Yeah. I was While like, I okay. may not totally be on board with Andor yet, I'm like, okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. Huh. So this is what's going to be like. Yeah. All right, I'm on board. <clears throat> what about you, Alex? I, in a vacuum, it's almost impossible because, like, I I, I, would, agree. I I wouldn't even say that I almost. It's all it's set up and it's important stuff because I, I'm almost viewing this series as like each three episodes is its own little movie, mm-hmm. and so I, I I think it's maybe like a seven yeah because it it hasn't it sets the tone I love the tone it sets it builds the universe I love all that stuff but it's not very a whole lot happens yeah. and so like if I'm trying to say just this in a vacuum now I, now that I have context yeah it's all important stuff but if uh, seven. Yes, this is very hard for me because I ha- I was between six and seven, but that does not reflect how much I liked it and how much by the end of episode three, I'm like, all this shit was necessary to get episode three's payoff and high score. So I was uh, initially going, I- I'm going to go seven as well. Uh, so episode two, uh, we start where uh, the tribe ends up uh, finding, you know, is on the way to this freighter uh, that crash landed and finds that their planet is being fucking strip mined, uh, you know, and they're a little surprised by that. I, I think they're surprised by it or maybe they knew about it and they just was looking for the ship. Um, <clears throat> and then we get the bell ringing guy I like this dude. <laughs> Takes a job serious. Boom, boom, boom. I like this guy. He knows what he's doing. Uh, and then um, uh, people are on the lookout for a canari. They, they they say the suspect that killed these two security officers is a, from Canari. Um, and we learned a little bit more about uh, this, this old lady character that he's living with. Or, or some she she has some connection to him. And, and they're worried uh, about what's, you know, what is what have you done? What's what's happening here? That kind of thing, um, and I I made some notes here. Ridley Scott, dark, uh, some of the lo-fi stuff feels like Alien. Good stuff. Um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, more it's it's I wrote it's kind of more like a crime drama than a space opera. You know, for yeah. kids. Star Wars. That's like, why, like I said, I kept forgetting it's Star Wars. Right. Was like, mm-hmm. And that I like that because mm-hmm. we can do different things within the Star Wars universe. Okay. Uh, Star Wars Visions, then anime series. Uh, doesn't prove always that. Have to be space doesn't wizards, always really? have to be. You know, <laughs> doesn't have to be fucking space wizards. And, and, and it and doesn't always have jokes. to be for stupid children. And and for and I don't mean yeah. like I don't mean like all children are stupid. I just really like there are some things that they make that are only for. Below average intelligence children. Yeah. And so what we have here is low level empire, no, low level security force intrigue and pre rebellion forming. And it's already interesting. And I'm like, okay, that takes some skill. 
Uh, so we get some more corporate maneuvering uh, where essentially – the, the corporate forces are, you know, that's when he talks with this guy. He's like, you know, they're the first line of defense for the Empire out here. Best use. Oh, that was in this episode, not the last episode. My bad. Uh, best use it to sharpen that knife. So he finds this other kind of fanatic ally. This, um, what would you call him? Go, go, uh, go. A gung-ho guy. Uh, then we go back to the tribe and... Um, like I said, it just the Star Wars universe, it feels lived in. There's different cultures on different planets and different universes. And um, the budget's there because it, it all looks great. And um, so the tribe moves towards the crushed ship or the crash-landed ship. And they're seeing these astronaut-looking guys that have all have, like, masks. And they're dead. And they're like bloated or yellow, yellow. faced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, I don't know if I would breathe in this. You can even see some like yellow gas coming up. Um, so definitely it's it's toxic, whatever they are mining here. And um, and simultaneously, as they're kind of doing this and searching the ship, they also do this thing where a man, a mysterious man, trench coated man lands his ship far away on the planet. And why that far, you know, <laughs> whereas, you know, there's been series. I even think it was Star Wars stuff. It's like, why are you parking your ship so far away? And then you have to walk all the way like Cad Bane just been, you know, Damn, how long you were walking, Cad? You know, but this one actually has a reason for it. It's like, yeah, we're, we're you know, 2.5 clicks away, but this is the safest you can be because he's trying to remain incognito. Uh, it's basically the buyer of this very expensive part, but he's a lot more than that. So anyways, uh, Bix wakes up, and I don't know if I saw this right, but I don't, I don't know if she's wearing underwear, and I, or is she wearing underwear? Okay, because I thought she didn't have any underwear, and I was like, I was going to say, oh, that must tie into when George Lucas told Leia that there's no underwear in space or something <laughs> like that. And so I was like, oh, they're doing that Easter egg, and no, that's not what's happening, and that's great that there's no, there's no fan service here. There's no like little fucking, you know, bits. It's just like this is the universe, you know. I'm not we're not going to try to name drop <laughs> Kenobi or just oh, some guy with a laser sword was walking down. No, they don't <laughs> do none of that. This is just good. You don't even know in Star Wars like you said sometimes. So I like that. Uh I just thought that was a funny joke if she was actually wearing underwear or not. I ca I can't remember. Uh so then we we get introduced to Marva. And uh what's what's this Marva character? Somebody pick it up. Uh, she's a um, she's like a part of a scrapper team, mm -hmm. and well, uh, she, she's an old woman, and mm -hmm. she is the adopted uh, adoptive mother for uh, for Cass. She's pissed. She's like, "Where have you been? Where are you doing? Like, you've been leaving in the middle of the night. What the hell's going on?" He's yeah, keeping secrets reports. from everyone. They've done a really good job at this point, ma making you realize that Andor's a piece of shit. Everyone doesn't <laughs> like Andor. They're he like, owes people money. you owe me money. Yeah. It's like, hey, you never brought over oh, yeah, those was things. A, there was a scene of that big but muscular There's dude. He's like, bro, uh, like you're my friend. Like, is he paying you this much? Like, he he's able to get out of things yeah. by talking his way out of it. But like, even his friends, everyone, he owes every single person on on that in that system money. Yeah. And um, so she's like, what, what the hell have you been up to? Like, what, what's going on with you? It's like, look at your face. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because he got, he got punched in the face and stuff. And then he's just telling her he's got he's getting out. And he's going to be going away sometime. So. Yeah. He's and we get, uh, and sort of uh, simultaneously, we also get the exploration of the ship in the past by the tribe. And, the tri and, and these astronauts, uh, one of them, who we thought was knocked out, gets up. And he's fucking, you know... I don't know, fucked in the head, and he's surprised by all these people. He just starts firing, and he fucking kills their tribe leader and, and tries to shoot these kids, but they, they fucking Peter Pan him that. <laughs> Peter Pan him to death, shoot some fucking, I don't know, blow darts, yeah, mm. and take them out. And uh, so all the kids rush to the tribe leader, and they're like, fuck, you know, it's fucking man, why this day sucks, you know? And Andor's pissed, and you can see it in his, he's like, fuck. He's like, fucking ship, god damn it. So he's just like staring at that ship. He's like, I fucking hate this. Um, <clears throat> anyway, simultaneously, and then we get uh, a, r a good one where this ship is on its way to pick up Andor. So they've assembled a team, uh, the corporate team. They're fucking space cops, essentially. And uh, 
How many men do we need? Uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, four, 12. Let's go with 12. <laughs> you know, let's do this right. Uh, go in and force. And so uh, the main lieutenant guy talks with the team, and people are listening his ass. And then, all right, it's your turn to talk now, uh, sir. You, it's your, your, go ahead. And he's like, um, yeah, l- l- uh, let's Thank do you this. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for being And he's just not a good public speaker, right? And uh, like his lieutenant is. So, the guys are like, nah, fucking, you know, NCO, he doesn't know shit. He ain't been through nothing. He's just looking for power and stuff. So, um, and then we also get a scene of, um, I think his name is Luthen. If we want to use his character name, uh, <clears throat> who is kind of like on a bus ride into the city. Uh, but the, the bus is kind of circling overhead and he just meets this old dude and it's just small talk. And even the small talk is good. It's world building. And this is world building. It feels like they're on a bus, not not in Star Wars, not floating. You know, it's like, man, back in the day, you, you can come in from any direction on, in the wasteland. You got to pay to park. Now gotta I got to do this out. shit. You got to pay for everything. Yeah, and so it's just fun, man. It's, it's a good lived-in world and good music. And, um, you know, this old man basically, you know, ends out the episode by telling... Uh, Luthen, like, if you can't find it here, then it ain't worth finding because this is, like, where you go to find shit, parts and stuff, obviously, because this guy's a propulsion guy, so he's probably there for, for his business. So that, that kind of ends that. And again, it's like, oh, fuck, no, no action at all. I, I mean, yeah, the, they, they fired a little bit and killed the, the lady tribe leader, uh, but that's about it. But it doesn't fucking matter because it's still it's setting things up. It's still interesting. Maybe if you were to compare it to the last episode, maybe one tick less interesting because it's like it's right on the precipice mm-hmm. of, of getting good. So what would you rate this particular one? More setup, more world building, but still enjoyed it. Uh, seven for me. Okay. Alex? Yeah, about the same. Uh, the urgency is increasing. Like the... <laughs> We've set a timer, and you get to. There's some tension in the fact that you know the ba- the the guys are coming to get him. He's trying to get off simultaneously. So it, it, it while it's probably a little less exciting, uh, I think the tension is building. Yeah. So again, uh, without the benefit of having seen all three episodes, I probably would have rated this a six. Well, at least that's what I wrote, and I wrote between six and ten or uh, seven. So it's like, but now knowing it, and then like, thinking about it again, I'm gonna end up with a seven. I think it's a solid acting, solid setup. A mm-hmm. good world building, and yeah, um, yeah, it does it. So into episode three, um, and then so essentially they start the episode with him going into the ship. So he's got the courage now. He's like, "Fuck you, you killed my tribe leader. What the fuck is this thing?" And he even sees reflections of himself in there. So it's like, I don't, do I buy the fact that they they don't have mirrors in this tribe? They're they're wearing. Stuff that looks sci-fi. I don't think it's he's never seen his reflection because I mean they what live on that? they live on the water. I think it's just him like staring. He's just at pissed his, he's pissed because just like, of yeah. his fucking tribe leader died yeah. and his friend died, so he he just starts hitting shit. He's fucking pissed. Yeah, you're right. And um, so bit uh, back on the planet, uh, Bix meets up with the contact, and they the contact already has a plan. She already they're already talking like they know each other and like. They know the secret stuff that he's really about. So maybe Bix will factor in because maybe she is a part of this. No, she pre- sells him all the time. Pre-rebellion stuff. Sells stuff to him, right? Yeah, yeah he, she sells stuff to him once a month. So okay. like that's that's <coughs> the relationship. Gotcha. Um, and then this, at this point in the, this thing, the, one of the most important things happened in the last episode we didn't talk about is Tim uh, yes. rats him out. Um, Fuck, uh, because yes. he's, he's got the whole like jealous boyfriend type thing. He doesn't really like Andor. And again, Andor is kind of a no, piece no, no, of no, shit. no. That's in this episode, it's isn't already, it? No, no, it was, it was the last one. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so he show up, and he's like, "Man, fuck this guy." And so he see and there's this report that comes into the planet saying if you've seen anyone from this planet that meets this description, and mm-hmm. so he just like that motherfucker's here, and so. By the time by the time that uh, Luthen shows up, there's already he's, he's like I know that they're looking for him. I need to get to him uh, quick. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, uh, s- yeah, so exactly right. So the scavengers basically um, we we flash back to the old lady when she's slightly younger and she's got a, a friend who's helping her scavenge this ship and they find young Andor basically bashing the controls. It's a and they're like we got to go. A Republic frigate is is incoming. They, you don't they don't want to f- you don't want to be found while uh, you know they're they're 
they show up. So <clears throat> that kind of gives context to what that is and where he, I guess, gets the part from that is so valuable. I don't know. I don't think he actually picks the part. She probably scavenges no, the he part. Gets a, he gets it years later. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was thinking that. But she's definitely salvaging something. I think it was fuel like cells. four fuel cells. Yeah. Okay. So um, the security t- team drops. Just great imagery. Cool. It fucking jumps in. They got little fucking drop ships, Starship Trooper style. They go down. It's fucking sweet. And just cool imagery and procedures. Uh, and then as they, as this is happening, his friends kind of see the, them incoming, the, the hardworking guys, and they're, they call them blues. The blues are incoming, you know, like the cops. And, uh, and so, yeah. And they then, don't like them around there. Yeah, they don't like it around these parts, right? <laughs> and they, they come in with their guns and in force, and I'm like, motherfuckers. And his friend, basically, they burst into his surrogate's mother's place, Minerva's place, and motherfuckers go after the bot. I'm like, you keep your fucking hands off don't, that bot. Don't hurt it. it alone. Don't kill it. Don't shoot it or something. And motherfucking Andor does a dumbass thing. And he's like, hey, I, I just wanted to say goodbye. Minerva, I'm sorry. And they're like, oh, shit. They're, he's talking through it at the same time. So they're like, okay. They they know where they, they're able to find him they're because he's him. talking via the bot. Um and so we cut to Andor, who is trying to simultaneously sort of meet the buyer. They meet in a private fucking place. Uh, what would you call this? A warehouse with a bunch yeah. of machinery on chains hanging up and stuff. And he meets the buyer, and he's like, 40,000 you know, credits, and we're doing this. He's doing this. This buy and this buyer, you know, Luthen has other motives. He's actually he's interested more so in Andor than he is the, uh, the piece that he's buying. Um, so he's done his research on him while the team closes in, the security team. And uh, the people of the town start fucking, you know, what do you, uh, you know, Bane doing an early s- warning system to. No and it's like, why? Stuff. Like, <laughs> what is that? Why are they doing that? Mm. What is what is that? Um, and you'll find out later. And it really builds nicely into that. They, they factor it into the story. But, yeah, somebody ratted him out like. um uh, Alex said, and it turns out to be the chick's boyfriend that, that ratted him out. And um, so, yeah, we go to the talking scene between Luthen and Andor. He wants to know how he got such a valuable Empire piece. And Andor just like, what this? I can get this shit all the time. Like, the, you know, all I got to do is get, you know, outfits. I just fucking do it. They're they're so arrogant that they don't even, you know, look. And, and that plays perfectly into Luthen. He's like, this is... This is the guy I'm looking we for. Need I need this guy for something he's working on. So uh, he's like basically says, don't you want to fight these bastards for real? You know, it's good, good lines. And um, <clears throat> they start to, uh, as as you hear in the distance, all this tapping, basically giving a, a, a warning to, I guess, Andor, I suppose, that the security team is busting heads or you know, raiding the old lazy's house. The locals don't like that shit either. Um, and they're just grabbing people. Anybody that runs in the streets, they're trying to grab. And uh, it's cool because everything is coming to a head at once. Um, and they grab Bix, slam her up against a wall. They're holding her. Uh, and we get essentially... Uh, a great action scene. It turns into a battle because uh, Luthen's clever. Uh, prior to meeting him at this place, he set up some charges. And he's given Andor some lessons, like let's start in lesson one, do this. Lesson two, always have an escape plan or, um, you know, in case something goes wrong. So he fires off his uh, Explosion. explosions where North team was already waiting. They're waiting for backup. They could have rushed in. Uh, and it starts the fight early. And, um, you know, the West team and the, the fucking officer that wants power and the lieutenant's like, what the fuck is going on? I told you not to fucking do it. And just <laughs> hell breaks loose and shit is falling. And and it's cool because you see the lasers, right? It's not like, you know, a gun. You don't really see the tra- – unless you war film, you'll see the tracers. But here are the lasers, and it's like getting close. I'm like, oh, shit, fuck. <laughs> and it, there's tension because you like the characters and you're into it. And that's – that's what's good when you have an action scene that has, I guess, t- tension and atmosphere. So, um, 
Yeah. So the fight happens, yeah, and then uh, Andor actually gets shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't ex- yeah, I didn't expect that. Gets shot. You Pretty know, he's not, not a not fucking not. Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I like that. And uh, so, and then we get a scene with Tim who shows up like a fucking idiot, and he sees that Bix is getting roughed up, and he's like, hey, what are you doing? Stop it. And Stop they're right like, there. hey, you fucking stay there. And he just keeps coming. And so the, one of the over... Overactive, uh, you know, Shoot guy him. shoots. He's shoots coming him. right at us. He's like, with what? Yeah, well, fuck, <laughs> he had fuck you, Tim. You <laughs> fucking like, they shot him anyways. Give yeah. me your fucking rifle. <laughs> well, it's at the least they show that you know it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so at least the sergeant is like, dude, you don't do that out of turn. Go fucking. But the to guy's the dead. Pod or whatever, <laughs> and you know, just get it in the air so that we have some backup. We're we're under attack. <clears throat> so that guy will will uh, later on happens. Um, so that clanging continues. Minerva is hanging out with these soldiers that are detaining her, and she's just getting into their heads. You know, it's like you hear all that clanging. Is it kind of bothering you guys? And like, yeah, what the fuck is it? What are they doing? She's like, mm. you know, well, you know, when it stops, that's uh, that's when you're really going to want to fret. And so just little psyops, yeah. you know. Uh, it turns out the workers sabotage that little drop ship, so when that guy goes back and lifts it for some air support... The, the tied some fucking junk to it. The <laughs> junk gets trapped in something. It swings the ship. It's whoa, fuck, psh, blows up. And then, you know, it's chaotic chaos because it's like, oh, fuck, what? Oh, There's an explosion behind us. We're under siege. There's 50,000 of them. <laughs> no, he's, I'm exaggerating, but he's like, we're under siege. Uh, and so they enact their plan. They They got this car. That uh, Andor and Luthen plan to get out with, and the car, you know, flies out, and so they're shooting at the car. Looks like the car's about to run down North Team, but they blow up the car. Obviously, it is a misdirection, <laughs> and it was a fake, and they come out on a fucking, what do you call it, speeder swoop, flies by, and you can just, <laughs> perfect shot. Uh, you could just see it on that officer's face, you know, uh, that he's been had, and he's gonna have to, uh, he's gonna have hell to pay. He did all these resources to get out here, he caused a commotion. All these people are dying. Riled <laughs> up the fucking locals, and it, the empire is gonna fucking be like, what the fuck is going on over here? And just good. When his superior comes back, he's fucked. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. She, um, it's, there's a, there's good scenes here and there where, you know, it doesn't, there's no dialogue. It doesn't spell things out for you. Like, for example, Minerva is seen to be like, you know, really sad because she knows that he's gone. Like, or yeah, he's going to try to come back, I think. But, you know, is she's like losing her kind of like a son to her or whatever. Just somebody that, that she's bonded with is, is now leaving. And it's a, it's an adult series. And... So as this officer is kind of shell shocked, you know, his lieutenant's like, "Sir, we need to get out of here!" Like fucking screaming at him. He's like, "You fucking fuck up!" And he, as he stares at his failure. So, and then they do this nice sort of cross section between Minerva taking Andor off the planet. He doesn't ever get to go back to his tribe. So it's like, damn, man, Andor never really had a, a life, a chance. He's just put into motion right away. And then same thing happens here. Lu- instead of it way. being Minerva, it's Luthor, Luthen ta- taking him off. And so they juxtaposition that and uh, taking him off planet. And he's going on a new adventure, you know, and so he's looking out the, the window just like he did. Uh, to the horizon. To the horizon in space. <laughs> so this episode was fucking awesome. Well, they need to be careful because they went to uh, light speed and then, uh, you know, you can run into ships and shit now. Oh. Um, Let's not bring um, that up. Because that happens. The hold on maneuver. Yeah, yeah, you got to make sure you don't hold on the planet. <laughs> So, uh, Joe, what'd you rate this one? Nine. Hell yeah! This is a nine. This one was a great one. This uh, had action. Mm-hmm. This one had great acting. Diego Luna killed it again. Yeah. Uh, fucking the story was great. No, nothing that made me question like, well, why are they doing this or anything. This was a right. great series so far. Yeah. 
trying to figure out if it's a nine or a ten for me. What do you think, <laughs> Alex? Uh, I mean, Tim running into guns was kind of stupid, but Tim was stupid. Good, so. we needed Tim to get his ass out of the store. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> you, you got to go. Uh, no, I really like this one. I think um, it is like a nine or a ten. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go with a nine. I okay. think it's great. I think that the that we can that this show is is super strong in this first you know three episodes. But I actually I am expecting the the stakes to be bigger, and I'm expecting the fights to be bigger. So I'm, I think that this show definitely has a ten out of ten <laughs> potential. Uh, potential. I think yeah. that's where it's getting up to. So, same here. So Next. nine out of ten for me. Uh, very solid, and it culminates. It needed those last two episodes that were somewhat slow but interesting to culminate into here. We got a nice little cross section of all the characters that we're supposed to kind of follow the the corporate ass. Whole uh, security force guy, um, the players in the rebellion, and Andor himself. So yeah, and then um, okay, well that's it for this particular episode. Uh, the, these three will give you a review for the fourth episode in the uh, coming uh, days. Thank you uh, so much for watching. If you liked these, uh, please consider supporting us on Patreon or subscribing. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye guys. <laughs>